this week's project, which was also last week's project, is this um, hardcover um, notebook holder. So I used to make a lot of these when I was when um, when we used to have open houses in the studio building that I'm in. We would have like four in December, which is kind of a lot. And um, you know, we needed a range of products. You know, some expensive, but some sort of stocking stuffer type products. And this was the one of the ones I made. So um, it's a hard cover that flips open like this, and then it has. Um, this four by six notepad. So it's one of those notepads that's like glued at the top. So if you can't find one of these to buy at the office supply store, you can actually make them yourself by just clipping together a stack of um, copy. It's thin, it's like copier paper, clipping together a stack of papers and putting some um, a couple of layers of PVA on the spine like that. Um, and then it slides into this pocket right here, um, the back the back um, cover of the notebook slides into that pocket. So I used to make a lot of these and I've never um, I've never done a tutorial on it, so I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, and the one that I made here, which I think you saw, uses um, paste papers because um, I have stacks of paste papers now from our retreat the other day. So this paste paper was um, made by just brushing on paste and then putting um, a grocery bag on top and it made this really interesting texture. I don't know if you can see it. It looks almost like leaves. There's the back. Looks like it's almost like a kind of eco print look, but it's actually um, a plastic bag from the supermarket. So um, uh, Mickey will very kind. Well, actually, in the description of this video, there's a description below and there is a link to where to get the directions for this um, notebook. And on the back page, I include um, a chart so that if your um, notebook is not four inches by six inches, so it's five by seven or it's in centimeters, you can um, adjust the measurements of all the book cloth because there's quite a lot of pieces that go into this. So um, the measurements I give are for a four by six book, but you don't necessarily have to have a four by six notebook, you could have a different size. Um, I think these are correct. If anyone tries it and finds an error, let me know. Um, because, I don't know, sometimes when I'm dealing with all these different measurements in millimeters and inches, my brain gets a little addled. So if you do see any errors, let me know and I can um, update them. Um, so thank you, Mickey. Mickey just put that in the um, comments. Thank you, Amy. I like this scarf too. Um, it's by an artist and I can't remember her name. All right, morning, Linda, morning, Jane, morning, Arlene. Hi, Todd. Hi, Dana. Lots of people here. Barbara, Anne, Sarah. All right, folks. Um, it's a very snowy day here. So I hope that you will be able to see my desk. If not, I can turn the big lights on. I'll show you outside right now. It is snowing. We're right in the middle of a snowstorm. So um, but that's OK, because we're home and cozy and ready to start making. All right, I'm going to switch my camera around and um, I'll still be able to see your comments while I am making this. So um, I will check them periodically to see if there are questions. Um, I hope I remember how to uh, make this because I had it ready last week. But, uh, you know, that was last week. So, all right, I'm going to bring my coffee. What's everyone drinking this morning? Are we on coffee or tea, water? Yes, right, there's my coffee. Switch things around. Okay, hopefully. Just give me one second to get situated because hopefully there are a lot of wires around here. There are lots of wires that need twisting around. Okay, here we go. Mocha. <laughs> Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy's drinking a Cosmo. I think that sounds like a great idea. Hi, Jeanette. Most of you are drinking coffee. Second cup, says Arlene. Okay. Um, I think the light here is pretty good, actually. Um, like, as you can see outside. Can you see the snow? Whoa. I don't think we need the extra light. Okay. Hopefully you can see that okay. So just let me know if you can hear and see me okay. That would be really helpful. 
Penny's drinking tea, yummy. Okay, we should probably put this coffee out of the way so that we don't spill over everything. Okay, so this book is essentially, it's essentially like a case binding. Um, that's kind of side, so it's like a case binding. Here's the spine, and then we flip it up to put our book in. So it's like, um, sorry, some of the case bindings you've done. We don't glue in the text block, we just kind of slide the text block in like this. I'm going to grab the instructions. Honestly, it's like a week since I made it, so let's just let's hope I remember, right? So all the pieces that you'll need, I've put them on the instructions for you. And remember, if you are going to make something that's a little different, that's OK. Um, we have the two boards, two pieces of book board. Uh, for this one, I actually used some backing board from a piece of um, like watercolor paper. And you see, I don't know if you can see, but it bowed slightly. Yeah, you see, it bows a little bit. So that is what happens when you use um, like thinner boards, which aren't sort of proper pressed book board. But honestly, in a pinch, like no one's going to mind, right? But it did bow a little bit. So I wanted to show you that. Um, I think you can hear me OK. Great. OK, thank you, Anne. Just want to make sure. So you will need two pieces of board cut to the right size. You'll need two cover papers to go on the front and the back. I mean, to go on the front. They don't look the right size, but I promise they are. You need two cover papers. You'll need two end sheets, and you will need um, three pieces of book cloth. The pieces of book cloth are one is for this pocket right here. One piece is for the front of the book, the spine. And one piece is for the spine on the inside. Um, you'll need your notebook. So like I say, these are pre-made notebooks. I got these from um, a local stationery store that's since closed down. Uh, but you could get them for the office supply store, Ryman's, WH Smith's, um, Staples. Um, and if you can't for whatever reason, or you can't leave the house, um, you can always make your own by getting copy of paper and clamping it with big, um, you know, bulldog clips. And then um, gluing along the edge here several times with some PVA. So, um, but luckily I have a stack of these. So from when I used to make them for open studios. You will also need um, just basic tools. Um, you'll need some glue. So some PVA glue. Um, you can also use um, Yes glue as well or whatever. Oh yes, is it Yes glue? Yes. I can't remember, but um, whatever kind of white glue you have on hand is fine. Okay, so step number one. Step number one is to figure out how, because we need to make this, um, we need to, we've got two boards here and we need to have a gap in between them. So here's one board, here's the other board. We need a gap here for this, for the spine or for the hinge, right? So it folds. We want to make sure that this gap is big enough such that it closes. Because if we made it too small, it wouldn't close. It would look like this. So we need to make sure that this um, spine hinge here is big enough to accommodate our book. So the way we're going to do that is to take a piece of just take a piece of um, scrap paper. This is just a piece of copy of paper. So what you're going to do. You're going to make one firm crease right there. You don't, you don't need to bone fold it, you could. But it's just a copy of paper. Make one firm crease. I'm going to find a pencil. Let's see. I'm going to take this. So you could use a ruler. I like to use a piece of paper and fold it over and crease it with your finger. That's the depth of your notebook. So if you have made the slip case um, this month, you'll know this is a method that we use. I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. My pencil is really blunt. Look at that. Put my other sharp pencils on my other desk. 
you could also just grab a ruler and measure it so if i measure this it's about ooh, yeah it's like some bizarre measurement like in 30 seconds which i'm not prepared to do so that is the depth of our book but that's not enough we need to add on at least a quarter inch so i'm going to add on i'm going to add on a generous quarter inch actually a little bit more than a quarter inch so let me get that sharp pencil i think i might lose my mind if i use a pencil like that so there was that original crease we made and then is that second mark for the um for the quarter inch i just snapped my pencil so this depth here is this right here hopefully that makes sense oh amazon has those notepads oh uh, nice 10 for 11.50 oh that's excellent nice thank you very much if you could include a link that'd be fabulous penny thank you um just for the us folks i guess i'm sure amazon uk has them too okay so let us the next step i really need to make sure i'm following the directions properly the next step is to take our hinge piece of book cloth now remember you've got all the measurements for a four by six book but you can alter them if you want to here is my hinge piece right here we need to transfer this measurement to it and then we're gonna um, put the two pieces of book board there so i have my grain run in this direction because this really is the direction of the spine. So if you can get your grain running lengthways like this on your hinge piece. I'm going to just get rid of that line because that was the line that marked my grain for me. And I'm going to find the center. You could eyeball the center or just fold it. So this is three inches. There's an inch and a half. Then I'm going to eyeball this. I'm going to center this gap right, right there. There's my hinge, there's my hinge. There we go. So this hinge here that I'm going to mark is going to be this gap. This we can throw away. Grab a, um, a square or a quilting ruler. Mark this, like that, making sure that this top edge lines up. Here's our gap. So what happens now is we glue one board here and one board here. And then we leave this open, okay? So I have some scrap paper. These were directions that I had to edit. So let's take our glue. To take off my scarf because it's in the way. You're gonna laugh when you see this glue part. It's kind of <laughs> using it a lot, and like all the glue like gums up from the edge. It's disgusting. But I love this pot because it's heavy. Um, it's you know glass and it's heavy, and so there's no chance of me knocking it over, which I'm kind of. I can be a bit clumsy, so. All right. Here's my hinge piece. Sorry. Hopefully you can see that. Here's my hinge piece. I'm going to stick our one cover here and one cover here. So if I was feeling really precise, I might mark it. Baby wipes on hand because you know that we're going to get glue everywhere. So, I'm just being a little picky here. There we go. So we're going to put glue on here and not in the hinge piece. So this is why I get that goopiness. All right, any questions? Folks, let's see. Mm, I don't 
can't see any, but I'll take a peek in a minute. All right. There's one piece. Let's stick this down. Just press. You don't need to bone fold it just yet. Let's fold this over because we don't want um, extra glue going everywhere. And then we're going to do the other piece. I want to have a ruler on hand, um, on hand. I'll show you why in a moment. Slide that under there. So like I said, you might, it's like you're making a case binding. Okay, remember, no glue in the center here. I've got a tiny bit there, but no glue in the middle because that's where the hinge is going to be. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to put this other piece in and my ruler is here. I'm pushing it up against that line. My ruler is here to make sure that they line up together. Um, there's lots of different things you could use. Um, you could do this like a, you know, if you could do a tool like this, box making. It's just to make sure that they're flush. Because if they were um, staggered slightly, the book wouldn't close properly. Okay, folks, so now we're going to glue up these side pieces like that. And then I will look at your question. Remember the printable directions. If you're just joining us, the printable directions are available. I have, so let me just, sorry, just, I'm gonna stop for a second. Push down in the middle first, and then smooth out with your fingers. Maybe a bone folder, but do the center channel first, the hinge first. Sorry, the table's wobbling. Okay, the other side. Folding this over because you don't want extra glue um, going on the front of your book cloth. Because, of course, I, I would never ever do that. And this time you can put glue in this channel right here. You do not have to leave it empty. Okay, really, we'll throw that away now. Wipe my fingers. Remember, push down in the channel. So I was saying that if you're just joining us, the printable directions are available for this book. They are under, they're in the description below. Perhaps Mickey could pop them in the comments again. That'd be really helpful. Okay. And then we have a piece of book cloth. All the directions are in, I mean, all the measurements are in the directions. Um, and I've also given you some um giving you a table to figure out the measurements if your um, notebook is a different size. And we're going to put a piece of book cloth right there to cover it up, just to make it look neat. Okay, and my grain is still going in this direction because our hinge is going in this direction. It's opening and closing this way. Even though the notebook goes this way, our grain is running this way. If you're new to making books, don't, you know, don't lose sleep over it. Do your best. Okay. Let's lift this puppy up. Get the extra glue with my fingers. Gently. Did you see how this is curling in on itself? That confirms for me that the grain is running kind of the way it's curling in. We could leave that for a few minutes to relax, but I am not very patient. Then do your best to center it. No, that's not very good, is it? But that's okay. Do your best. So you could also use um, wheat paste if you wanted to, um, or a wheat paste PVA mix. I'm going to go in the center first, just to make sure that the book's cloth goes into that center channel, then I'm going to rub the sides. If you feel like you had lots of extra glue, you could put um, a waste sheet over this. If you felt like you did a bit messy, you could cover it up, but um, for once in my life, I was not messy. This is a Teflon bone folder. You can also use a plastic or a bone, should you want to, um, but Teflon is nice because it doesn't make the book cloth shiny when you rub on it like this. Okay, 
So there we have your case. Let me check your questions. Where are we, Penny? Oh, thank you, Penny, so much. That's great. Uh, PVA. PVA. Oh, what is Gretchen says? What is PVA? So PVA is um is short for polyvinyl acetate, and it's a uh, it's like a white glue, and um it dries clear, it doesn't yellow, and it's acid free. So it's great for making books. Uh, okay. Could use a spiral notebook instead and oh that's a good idea so yes and i guess you could use a spiral notebook gosh these people are so smart so say this was a spiral notebook you just need to make sure that this you know your gap your spine hinge that there's enough space so i don't have a spiral notebook to hand but let's say this was a spiral notebook and you took your strip of paper to measure it. I would be really generous wrapping this over to make sure that you accommodated the coils. And But that's a really smart idea. You could definitely do that. Um, and then add on a good quarter inch just to make sure. Um, and what you may want to do if you were going to use a steno notebook, just to be sure, perhaps make a mock up with a piece of um, a couple of bits of um, you know, cereal box and I don't know, like masking tape or um, duct tape to make sure that you've got this channel the right size before you used up a nice book cloth. Um, is there an alternative to book cloth for this? Um, you could use book cloth tape if you can find it. You can make your own book cloth. Um, not sure there is really. I know some people use duct tape, which I mean, I'm not saying you should use duct tape, but um, if anyone else can think of an alternative, that would be great. Uh, you're welcome, Gretchen. But Anne, that's a great idea for the um, using a steno notebook or spiral notebook. I like it. All right, we have this little hingy thing going on. Let's oh, maybe we should check that it's going to close okay. Yep, it's going to close just great. So, yes. Um, and then, you know what? If for some reason it didn't close properly, let's take a few of those out and no one would be any the wiser. Okay. The next step is to put our covers up. So I have some my paste paper here. I'm going to mm, it's a little fade. Mm, I don't like that. We're going to wrap our cover pieces around like that. If you um, which piece do I want at the top? I want the blue at the top. If you are feeling particular, I like to overlap it just by a tiny amount on the book cloth. I don't like to have it butting up right against the edge. I like to have it overlapping by maybe an eighth of an inch. That's the inside. So I will just, I will center it. You could measure if you wanted to. You could, um, or you could even make this cover paper bigger and use your ruler and cut off perfectly sized turn-ins. This is just a quick kind of holiday gift, so I'm not going to go that crazy. I'm just going to draw around it so it's approximately centered. And I've got a tiny little one eighth of an inch gap right here. Maybe it's even a sixteenth. I don't know. I'm going to pop glue in here. So this is quite a long project today, folks. Hope you'll bear with me. Or maybe you're watching the replay. Who knows? I'm just putting a nice even layer. Do you see I'm only going in one direction? I'm not going back and forth. Because if I went back and forth, the glue might go underneath the cover. So you can just say I'm going in one direction. I'm just putting it within that um, square that I made. You could do the whole thing as well. But I find sometimes it dries pretty quick, the PVA. Okay, so move this around. I'm going to line this up. You can see that. So there we go. And there's a little overlap right here. I'm going to sort out that little ragged edge because that's going to drive me bananas. Okay, so we're going to cut off 
two triangles right here. And you might be wondering, well, how do I know? This gap here is about the depth of a book board. So if you have a scrap of book board hanging around, you can actually measure it. I also have this tool from um, Colorways. Nice lady there, Colorways. And if your book board is nice and th if your book board is as thick as this ruler, you could use this to cut your corner. However, if your book board is thinner, this tool is not going to work. So this is a nice tool though from Colorways, I have to say. But it just relies on the fact that you've got quite a thick book board. You can see that. So if you want to see that, it's Colorways. And I believe she has an Etsy shop. Let's fold these up. So what questions do you have? Oh, craft text. Oh, yes, Sarah. Timex. You could use Timex. Yeah, you see, I knew I couldn't think on the fly this morning, but you folks can. So yes, for the spine, you could use Timex or craft text. See, this is why we get together, because I don't have all the answers. But between us, we do. There we go. So I just put glue on that one side and then glue on this other side. Try not to put too much on there. Don't want it squelching out, do we? And you can um, you can see the you can see that little overlap right there now. It's probably easy to see. Let's move that out of the way. So always fold down the sides first and the top and bottom. Sorry, the table's wobbling. So in this corner here. You're going to get the tip of your bone folder or um, a fingernail if you have them, which I don't. And push that in just like that. Mitered corner. There we go. Another reason not to have too much glue, otherwise you'll get glue everywhere. So just tuck in those corners. Fold this over. And I'm going to repeat on the other end. If anyone needs to go grab coffee. I'm going to well, use the ladies room. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So that folds in nicely and then those corners are nice and neat. So in an ideal world, these would all line up. But you know what? Apparently, I think 2020 has shown us we do not live in an ideal world. OK, so I'm rubbing along the edge like that to make sure that there's no air bubbles. I'm pushing, and I'm pushing hard. I'm pushing down firmly. There we go. So you could also use craft text. Whoever suggested that, that's rather brilliant. So there we go. I'm gonna smooth this down somehow with my bone folder. So that looks kind of fun. I like this cover. Love that paper. Let's do the same on the other side. So if you, like I said, you need a refresher, we'll do the blue at the top. Do you notice how my grain is going this way? So. Actually, it's going this way, which is in line with the spine of the book. Let's overlap this a tiny bit. So you, like I said, you could measure if you wanted to. I feel like eyeballs are just great for this. Pencil. That is not quite even on both sides. But you know, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think anyone is going to call the find in police but they might so I'm just filling in the area um, inside the pencil marks you could put glue of the whole thing but then you've got to cut off your triangles which um, could be kind of messy if there was glue on there right um, some people put glue on their straight on their board you could do that um, but then you're going to run the risk of getting glue up here. So I wouldn't I'd want to risk it. Okay. This way around. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Lay this down. Move over a little bit. Yeah, press down firmly. Ooh. I can see these being useful for some collage. Just 
Now, this paper I'm using is quite thick. It's a, um, I'll say Archer's text wove paper. Um, so I'm folding it up. If you had a thinner paper that you, um, you know, whatever you were using, you may not need to do that. But um, this is quite a thick paper, so I'm sort of pre-creasing it. All right, let's go in with that fancy tool from Colorways. I don't think this tool is expensive either. I want to say 10-ish. Oh, cute. It's really not bad. Okay. Oh, look. Did I get that the wrong way? <laughs> look, it went the wrong way. Clearly, that was intentional. Clearly, that was part of the design. I think I got the grain running the right way, but um, the pattern going the wrong way. Okay, so that was just to see if anyone was paying attention. Okay. So you could solve all those issues by using a handmade paper, right? And um, which didn't have a grain. So you could go any which way you liked. So when I glue this, I pull in a little bit with my fingers like drag it inwards so that there's no air bubbles on this edge right here. Smooth it out with your bone folder. Make sure there's no air bubbles or sort of wrinkles. Get it nice and flat. Take the tip of your bone folder and push in those triangles. If there are any questions, I'm going to come check them. Oh, thank you, Dana, for putting that link in. Yes, craft text could definitely be used as an alternative to the book cloth. Um, Who's that, Daria? Yes, so um, I think that's a really good idea. I don't know why I didn't think of it. Okay, here we go. And then that final piece of glue. Let's get rid of that paper. Remember, oh, got glue on my finger. Remember, sort of pull like this with your fingers so that there's no air bubbles along the edge. Push with that bone folder. See how neat those corners are? I mean, don't look at this part here, but those corners are nice and neat. And that's partly because this tool helps um, cut those um, triangles perfectly. So if you do order one of these, let her know that you came from Vintage Page Designs. Because um, I think, I believe she gave club members a discount a while ago. So it's kind of good for her to know where she found, where you found, you know, where people are coming from. So here are my two end sheets. One of them I'm going to glue straight down, but the other one we need to put our pocket on. Our book cloth pocket. So why don't we do that one first and let that dry a little bit. And then we will glue down the, um, the other end sheet. So you could center this. This um, pocket's actually wider than this one. This one, I believe, is um, about two and a half inches wide. It, it doesn't really matter how wide it is. Um, just kind of whatever book cloth you have lying around. Um, you could do it like two thirds of the way down. You could do it in the middle. It doesn't really matter. This one here, uh, we did kind of just off center. It's not really, um, there's no rules. But I'm going, to, I'm going to do it in the middle for a change. I'm going to center this end sheet over here. So if you wanted to um, score it, you could. If you felt like your book cloth was tricky, or say you were using something thicker, like Craftex, you could. You could definitely score. But I don't feel like I need to. I feel like I could just use my fingers, she says. There we go. So we're folding that over our end sheet. So this is our little pocket. So I need a piece of paper now. There we go. So we're only going to put glue on these two back flaps. We're not going to put glue under here, right? Otherwise, the um, notebook wouldn't fit through. And you may be thinking, oh, I wonder why she's telling me that. Well, probably because I've done it before. Most likely. So we're going to put a tiny bit of glue on each of these little flaps that we just folded over onto the back of the end sheet. We're in the home stretch, folks. We're almost there. So you could set up a little production line for these. 
Um, and even if it's a little too late, ooh, I'm trying not to get too much glue. If it's a little too late for um, a Christmas present, make them for New Year's presents. I'm just gonna pull that in a little bit. You know what, honestly, I might have, um, it might have been a good idea to score along here and here just to make sure those folds were neat. Put these with a bone folder, put a waste sheet on if you if, you, if there's excess glue. There we go. Might be good just to check that this is going to fit. Yeah, that fits. And then let's just set that to one side. You could maybe put that under a, a heavy uh, book or something just to let it dry for a minute or two. I'm just going to set it to one side. Let's so let's decide which is going to be my front cover. All right, let me know in the comments. Do we like vertical stripes or horizontal stripes for the cover? So you tell me and I will decide. I will pick whoever the colorways. Oh my goodness, Mandy is going to make 25 for her daughter's work team. Are you serious, Mandy? Seriously? Ah, uh, vertical, says Ali. Excellent. Hi, Pat. Nice to see you. Hi, Nita. Hi, Daria. I know Daria's been here for a while. How do you make book tape, says Anne. Um, you actually buy book tape. Um, it's actually more common in the UK. I don't see it as much over here. Um, but, um, well, that's a very good question. Chris says, could you cover the boards before the spine? Could I possibly do that? Yes, you could. Yeah, why not? Absolutely, you could cover your boards and then, in fact, if I was going to do craft text, I might cover my boards first and then um, do, say, craft text for the spine. So yes, why not, Chris? Definitely. So what's everyone said? Vertical. Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. Oh, that's too funny. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Horizontal. Oh, my gosh. All right. Oh, no. It's about half and half. One of each. Uh, it seems like you guys like the horizontal. Okay, that's bizarre. Okay, so this is my front cover and this is my back cover. So the back cover is gonna have the pocket. The front cover is gonna have the plain end sheet. So if we're gonna do horizontal, which you asked for, I'm gonna put the plain end sheet on the front cover. I need a piece of paper. I need one more waste sheet. Let's grab that out of my printer. I don't normally do that. So I'm spreading my glue a little outwards. Then the one direction so it doesn't go out to the front. I just want glue on the back, not on the front. Okay. Of my fingers. No, so you see how that's curling? At least we know that the grains are in the right direction. So horizontal stripes on the front. I'm going to try really hard to center this as best you can. So if you are just joining us, the directions for this are below, and the uh, measurements are for a four by six notebook. I've included them in inches and metric, but I also included directions to change up the measurements if you have a different size book. You know, it might have been nicer if my end sheet had come to there, but that's okay. I can live with that. Might have looked a little neater. It's all right. So I'm just rubbing out any um, air bubbles because this also is a fairly thick paper. It's like a mixed media paper. Um, you don't have to use such a thick paper, although to be honest, it might be good for the pocket. All right, and then the final piece. So this is my end. Uh, this is the end sheet for the back cover. Where the notebook is gonna slide through. You might wanna leave this dry a little bit longer, um, but um, we're live, so we're not going to. 
I'm going to do it right now. All right, sorry, text just came through. My daughter is doing her finals up at the University of New Hampshire this week. And I've been trying to, she just texts me to let me know she's awake, which is, which is always good because she has to study today. There we go. Let's twist this around. Oh my gosh, there's lots of you on here today, like 150 people, yay. Um, and if you're watching the replay, that's just peachy too. All right, we're almost done, folks. I would put a you know a decent amount of glue on these um, side pieces where the book cloth pocket lives. Slide this here. Center it. There we go. It's going to um, take my directions and mm. use them as I, I guess I didn't refer to these directions again. Let's hope we did it right. Of course we did. Ride a bike, you remember. I've made so many of these over the years for holiday fairs. Once you set up like a production line, you can, like Mandy's gonna do. Hey, so, when it's dry, you're going to slide your notebook in here. But while it's drying, what I like to do is wrap this in uh, wax paper. I don't have any to hand. Um, wrap this in wax paper and then fold it over and press it so that it all um, presses together. But you're going to put the wax paper on the book so that um, any extra glue doesn't seep through. Let me grab the wax paper. You know, like a piece, piece of deli paper or something. Or, um, I don't know what this is for. So wrap this around to protect it. Put it inside and then press under books. And there's a little lift here because of the wax paper. And then um, press it for a little while. If you feel like there's extra, tons of extra glue, you may want to put a piece of... Um, copier paper or um, blotting paper in here to take up the extra moisture. You particularly want to do that if you use quite thin boards. So if you use thin boards, like from the back of a watercolour paper or something, take some um, just plain paper here as well, on here and on here, and that will absorb some of the moisture and that will stop the bowing. Um, but I'm pretty happy I use thick boards. I don't see any bowing yet. so. I'm going to put that in there, um, put it under weights, and it's good to go. Let me just pull this out. Don't do this, but let yours dry first. Oops. And then you slide the notebook in and wash your ankle. There we go. Notebook holder. So. All right, folks, let me see. Um, Dana says, I have a hard time laying my end sheets in the case and getting them even all the way around. Yeah, me too. Oh, Sarah says, add a pen loop. Yes, I was thinking about that the other day. Yes, you could put a pen loop um, in here. So when you're gluing over your end sheet, see the air bubbles there, put an extra piece of... Um, book cloth or craft text, whatever you're using, and um, you do a pen loop. Um, so Dana says she has a hard time laying down, getting them even. Me too. Um, I don't know what the answer to that is. Hmm. I mean, I guess you could mark with a pencil where they're supposed to go, but that seems kind of fussy. If anyone's got a tip for Dana, I would be... Um, I'd be curious to know because part of it just feels like it's practice. One thing that does help actually, Dana, is um, when you're laying it down to stand up, um, if you're sitting at the work table, sometimes when you're laying down a piece of paper, it's it's more difficult. But if you stand up and look, you know, above the um, 
the paper it's easier then to make sure that your gap is even all the way around because if you're sitting you're kind of looking at it from a slight angle so that would be the one thing another tip actually now i'm thinking i think give some tips would be to use um wheat paste or wheat paste pva mixed together or even put a little methyl cellulose in your pva so that gives you a little more dry in time so that um, when you lay it down you can move it a little bit because with pva kind of when it's down it's down but if you add something that slows down the dry into your glue then you can wiggle it a little bit and that would probably help good question jane says book tape from hollanders is 30 dollars a roll <laughs> i'd just be tempted to make my own book cloth actually um there is a tutorial on my blog mickey which tells people how to make their own book cloth, if you wouldn't mind posting in the comments. Um, Mandy says, I'm curious about grain of book cloth. I'm using Kozo backed fabric. Kozo backed fabric, okay. Um, is it homemade book cloth or is it um, purchased? The, the best, um, I don't, let me grab a piece of book cloth. I need a visual. Sorry, folks, I just had to go grab some book cloth scrap. I find when I purchase book cloth, um, oh, thank you, Mickey. Oh, she's so, you see, Mickey can like read my mind. She already posted how to make handmade, um, how to make handmade book cloth. Oh, there's two pieces here. I find when I'm testing book cloth for grain, it's best to have the cloth facing upwards. And then you just give it a bounce. You can tell. Ooh, yes, you can tell. So this way, when I bounce it, it's tough to bounce. <laughs> when I bounce it this way, and bounce is a very technical term, it's a lot easier. So that means, tells me my grain is going this way. But it's homemade. Um, well, the Kozo paper won't have a grain, uh, Mandy, if it's homemade. Um, um book cloth but the fabric will so this is a piece of homemade book cloth with some silk i think and you can you you can just tell by bending yeah i can just tell by bending it oh my gosh look at that you can see it's cracking because that's going against the grain whereas if i bend it this way it's nice and smooth but yeah, the, I don't believe Kozo has um, a grain, so you should be all set. Thank you, Mickey. She's so good. It's like having a second brain. Um, oh, that's a good idea. So Mandy has got a good idea. This is for Dana. You could use a wooden skewer to mark the edges or a flat stick. I think, is that what you mean, Mandy, for making sure that your end sheet is even all the way around? That's a really good idea using a very thin stick that's really smart practice says Todd it is yeah it is practice uh, Maria says she uses CMC with PVA so it doesn't glue so fast what's CMC I don't know what CMC is uh, thanks Mickey she's so good um, I'm just reading your comments thank you Todd so um, the cloth grain is parallel to the selvage so the selvage is is selvage the one with the writing <laughs> selvage is the one with the writing down the sides right todd so that's i just i mean i just do it by feel i've generally cut the selvage off but yeah if you know what the selvage is then you can also tell Um, so Phyllis says, is it the grain of the paper or the backing paper? Ideally, Phyllis, you want to make sure that they're both the same. The only thing is the backing paper on, um, book cloth is quite, it's really thin. You're generally using like a very thin Japanese paper. So it's more the fabric you want to worry about. Um, the grain, of the fabric is the most important, but you do want to also keep in mind the paper too, but it's the fabric. Kozo is like a mulberry paper. Um, and ask what's Kozo. It's a um, type of mulberry or washi paper. They're all sort of, it's from the mulberry um, plant. It's called lots of different things. Uh, where was Dawn? Where did Dawn? 
Okay, here's a... So another <laughs> poor Dana, she's getting all this advice. Dawn has great. Um, Dawn is saying the same thing that Mandy was saying about making sure your end sheets are really even. She auditions the paper and puts a quarter or eighth inch spacer bars down one side and then carefully line up the pasted sheet and scoot the spacer bar out the way. That's a great idea. Thank you, Dawn. I guess I'm just not that picky. I'm like, oh, it's good. Good enough. <laughs> but no, that's a great idea, Dawn. Um, Barbara says, are there instructions? Um, Barbara, if you are a member of the book club, which I think you are, the instructions are um, from Saturday's, from uh, last Sunday's retreat. So um, if you go to the um, Handmade Book Club's Facebook group, um, the retreat recording is right there and the instructions for the origami um, ornament are right there. Okay, let's see. Kozo is, yes, it's a flavor of washi paper, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. So Mickey just posted the printable directions again for this in the comments. Thank you, Mickey. Honestly, my life without Mickey, it's just, oh, she's fabulous. Okay, folks, um, I am going to take a break for two weeks because it's Christmas and I'm going to um, take some vacation time. So I will not be here for the next two Thursdays, but I will be here for um what day do I get back let's have a look let me look in my 2020 book I will be back on Thursday the 7th of January I don't know what we're doing but we'll be doing something on Thursday January 7th so I'm going to take the next two Thursdays off from doing Facebook live um talking of 2021 I just wanted to give you a little heads up that just in case you you know you want to mark your calendar the next five day challenge takes place on march 8th so um it's a ways away but we need some things to get through the winter we need some things to look forward to so mark your calendar um i know what the project's going to be but i'm not going to tell you just yet but um i do know what the project's going to be so so for those of you who enjoyed the five day challenge and if you don't know what the five day challenge is um we get together for five days straight and make a book in five days so it's great for beginners so on day one you know we cut our pages on day two we glue our covers on day three we I don't know punch our holes on day four we do the sewing on day five we do the finishing touches it kind of generally goes like that so mark your calendars folks for that um so yes Merry Christmas everyone Merry Christmas Dawn and Daria and Sharon and Ida, Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm sure 2021 is going to be a heck of a lot better than 2020. But um, my 2020 has been a lot brighter for having you right here to see every Thursday morning. So thank you. Thank you for showing up. Um, no, Michelle, um, uh, Sarah says, is the challenge open to, no, it's open to anyone, Sarah. It's open to the world. It's open to the whole world, Sarah. Everyone is welcome. Um, in the meantime, um, if you make the project, please post it in the uh, free Facebook group, Crafting Handmade Books, because I'd love to see the different projects you come up with. If you find any little errors in the directions, let me know, because I'm not perfect. And those are linked below. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful holiday.